Hi everyone, today we're gonna to be talking about Dr. Peter Atia's approach to longevity. For months I've been listening to his podcast and last weekend I bought his book, Outlive, and finished it in literally four days. Dr. Atia is one of the leading voices in the longevity space right now. I've learned so much from his podcast and from his book. Because of this, I decided to dedicate an entire video to Dr. Atia's threefold approach to longevity. The first part of his approach is defining clear objectives. One of the many things I appreciate about Dr. Atia is his focus on the individual's end goals. We're gonna talk more about what that means, but first we need to explore the idea of lifespan versus health span. Lifespan is the length of time someone is living. It's a binary thing. You're either alive or you're not alive. Health span is a little more difficult to define. It's generally thought of as the period of time when someone is without disability and disease. In his book, Dr. Atia explains that health span has three elements, decline of physical function, decline of cognitive function, and decline of emotional health. Unlike the first two elements, emotional decline is largely independent of age. Dr. Atia argues that living for a long time is far more worth it if you can avoid or defy these three areas of decline for as long as possible. In other words, you don't wanna just have a long lifespan. You wanna have a long health span as well. Okay, back to objectives. Dr. Atia has this concept called the marginal decade. Your marginal decade is the last 10 years of your life. For most people, this is a period of lower life quality. Your physical function has declined and your cognitive health is starting to decline. But what if you could change that for yourself? What if you could have a remarkable marginal decade? And what would that look like for you? Dr. Atia has his patients think really carefully about what they would like to be able to do during the final 10 years of their lives. For instance, do you wanna go on long walks every day? Do you wanna be able to take your dog for a walk? If so, what kind of dog do you wanna have? It takes a whole nother level of strength and stability to walk a Husky than it does to walk a Chihuahua. Do you wanna be able to cook for yourself and do laundry for yourself? Do you wanna be able to pick up and play with your grandkids or maybe your great grandkids? By defining your objectives, the things you would like to be able to do in your marginal decade, you can better prepare for that marginal decade. I think this is really important. Everyone's objectives for their marginal decade are going to be a little bit different. There's no one size fits all solution. My objectives are gonna be different than your objectives and we'll have a few similar things, but our objectives are going to inform the rest of what we do. This leads us to the next component of Dr. Atia's threefold approach to longevity. In his book, Dr. Atia writes, to achieve our objectives, we first need to have a strategy, an overall approach, a conceptual scaffolding or mental model that is informed by science, is tailored to our goals, and gives us options. Let's think about tactics versus strategy. It seems like we live in a culture where most people wanna skip strategy and go straight to tactics. It seems like people want someone to tell them, consume this type of olive oil, avoid canola oil, eat this amount of protein at this exact time, do this exercise for 27 minutes every day, and you'll burn all of your body fat. These are all examples of tactics. Without strategy or knowing why you're doing what you're doing, then you're likely to just jump from one fad diet to the next fad diet and never achieve sustainable results. If our objective is to have a remarkable marginal decade, then as part of our strategy, we need to understand what keeps most people from having one. As people age, they become increasingly vulnerable to chronic diseases. Dr. Atia goes on to explain that if you wanna live longer, then your objective should be to delay the onset of chronic disease as long as possible. What you wanna avoid is figuring out how to live longer once you already have a chronic disease. There are four broad categories of chronic disease that Dr. Atia calls the four horsemen. The first is metabolic syndrome. This ranges from insulin resistance to type two diabetes. Here's a fact that blew my mind. In the 1970s, the average American male weighed 173 pounds. Now the average American man tips the scale at over 200 pounds. What's wild is that if you meet the qualifications for having metabolic syndrome, it doubles your chances of dying from the other three horsemen. The second horseman is heart disease. This includes heart attacks and stroke. In the US alone, this accounts for 2,300 deaths daily, according to the CDC. The third horseman is cancer. And the fourth horseman is neurodegenerative disease. This includes things like Alzheimer's and Parkinson's. In his book, Outlive, Dr. Atia goes into a ton of detail about the things that increase your risk of dying due to one of the four horsemen. Essentially, strategy comes down to understanding which of these chronic diseases you're most at risk for, and then learning the tactics you can implement to reduce your personal risk. The third element of Dr. Atia's threefold approach to longevity is tactics. Within tactics, there are five broad tactical domains that you can use to reduce your risk of chronic disease. First, we have exercise, then diet, then sleep, then exogenous molecules and emotional health. Let's dive in and expand on each one of these. Exercise. 
Something that blew my mind in the book was a study that Dr. Atia cited. Apparently being unfit carries a greater cardiac risk than any other risk factor. This means that not being physically fit puts you at more risk for death than smoking. Dr. Atia's approach to exercise is not about helping you get a faster marathon time or get bragging rights at your gym. It's about helping you live a longer and better life. Because of this, he breaks exercise down into three broad categories. First, you have cardio, which mainly includes zone two training and VO2 max training. Then comes strength training. This is about building muscle. The third category is stability. Stability training helps prevent injury and improve your form across all other exercises. If you wanna learn more, check out Dr. Atia's podcast or get the book or go to his website. The next tactical domain is diet. If you're like me, you've probably tried a number of diets keto, slow carb, veganism, high protein, low fat, the list goes on. Something that I find interesting when it comes to diet is there are a number of people that have almost this religious zeal around which diet is the best diet. People get so caught up in trying to find the one true diet when the truth is not every diet is gonna work for every person. For instance, a diet that lowers my ApoB levels might spike yours. In his book, Dr. Atia writes that the best nutrition plan is one that can be sustained. A diet isn't really gonna help you live longer if you can only manage to stick to it for a few weeks. He goes into a lot of detail on macros and different ways that you can adjust your diet. If you wanna know that, make sure to check out his podcast or read his book. The next tactical domain is sleep, and I've been learning a ton about sleep over the past few months. I've actually made a few videos about it, I'll link those below. What I didn't realize is that sleep greatly reduces your risk of chronic disease. Apparently deep sleep especially reduces our risk of Alzheimer's disease. In addition, sleep plays a huge role in your body's ability to regulate glucose levels. There are so many reasons to get good sleep. I skipped out on getting good sleep for years and I really wish I hadn't. The final two tactical domains are exogenous molecules and emotional health. Exogenous molecules include pharmaceutical drugs, supplements, hormones, etc. Dr. Atia doesn't really spend too much time talking about these in the book. I've heard a few podcasts where he talks about them a bit more, but they don't seem to be a huge component of his approach to longevity. As mentioned earlier, the final tactical domain is that of emotional health. Say that you got everything else right and you ended up living to be 120. Is it really worth it if you get there depressed and emotionally unhealthy? The final chapter of Outlive focuses on emotional health and it hit really hard. For a long time, I've thought of myself as a fairly emotionally healthy person. This final chapter made me realize that I have work to do and that I need to reevaluate some of my priorities. That final chapter is especially worth reading. Let's do a quick recap of Dr. Atia's approach to longevity. It all starts with defining your personal objectives. What do you want your marginal decade to look like? Then we move to strategy. What does my risk profile look like and how can I reduce that risk? Then we move to tactics. How can we use exercise, diet, sleep, and exogenous molecules to lower our risk of chronic disease. If this video was helpful to you in any way, I'd really appreciate it if you gave it a thumbs up. Leave me a comment if you have any questions and I'll do my best to get back to you. If you wanna see how I apply these things to my life, make sure to follow along. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.